Good morning, everybody. It's me, Mitch. The subject for today, and I hope you're not disappointed that I'm not going to cook bacon and eggs, but I'm going to talk about something that seems to be all too common among us carnivores. And that is that most of us walk a solitary path. For any number of reasons, we seem to be alone in this whole thing. We turn to each other in this community for support because we can't turn to the people around us. We can't turn to our family, our co-workers. And if we happen to live alone, like I do, then we can only talk to ourselves. That's why I've entitled this video, Solo Carnivore. And solo carnivore doesn't necessarily mean you live alone but you're practicing this lifestyle alone. And to successfully practice a carnivore lifestyle, the single biggest consideration is the food. And some of the things that I've discovered, and you'll pardon my back while I, while I do this, but there are some things that I've discovered about the way that I buy food that requires some thought in advance or you end up eating more of this food more often than you really wanted to because you've prepared or unfrozen this much, this three and a half pounds of wild-caught sockeye salmon, for example, which I bought this morning for $28 on sale at Sam's Club. Now, normally what I used to do is I would take this three and a half pounds of salmon and I'd throw it in the freezer because it's all vacuum sealed already. And not really or thinking in advance about the fact that when I took this out of the freezer and thawed it, that even if I cooked it, I within four or five days at the most, I had to eat three and a half pounds of this stuff. And I found myself not wanting to eat that much salmon in that short a period of time because what I want to do is have this once in a while. So I had one of these, duh, moments where I said, you know, maybe I shouldn't throw this whole big thing in the freezer. Maybe I should portion it. Same thing with this cod filet, skinless cod filet that I bought. This was two point, about two and a third pounds for $21. And there's at least two meals here but I don't want to eat cod and I like to fry it with the pork, the uh, panko pork rind crumbs in bacon grease, but I don't want to eat it twice before this goes bad. Same thing with ribs. I buy these huge, this one weighs 6.6 .6 pounds, six and a half pounds of ribs. There are four meals here. And what happens is I would be cooking these in the oven, like you've seen in my videos. And then I'd have four pounds of ribs to somehow dispatch within a week. I don't want to eat that many ribs. So like I said, I had a dull moment and I said, you know, I have a vacuum sealer. I have a vacuum sealer right here. And I use it for steaks and chicken wings, but 
I need to start using it more and more and more. And I need to start using it so that I can portion these things that I buy in bulk so that I can portion them, freeze them in single serving size portions, and thaw them on the occasion that I want to eat it because these are not things that I eat regularly. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get these ribs out of the plastic. God, look at the meat on these things. And I don't really do anything to them. I'll just take them over here to the, to the cutting board. And I'm going to cut this in, in two. And half of this will fit nicely in the air fryer basket. And I think that it's going to be right here. Then I'm going to cut them. Now we're going to take the bag here and put it in, in the vacuum sealer. Close it. And seal it. There we go. So that's a meal right there. So far to date, this is the best one, the best one that I've found. The food saver, what model was this? Just says food saver on it. I think I got a link on my website to this particular one. And it's a, and it's a good one. It's a good one. All right. So now that we've, uh, that we've done, done our pork, I'm going to go ahead and wash off the cutting board before I cut my fish on it. All right, so now I have some of this really nice looking cod. God, is this beautiful. Look at this. And uh, I do want to portion this up. So we'll take these two big pieces of fish. And I think, since I like to eat a pound, I'm going to make three, three portions out of this. I'm going to take... the smaller ends from both of these fillets. I'm going to make a portion out of that and some, some portions out of this. So that's my three, and I'm not even going to date these things because they're not going to last long enough for me to worry about whether they're getting too old. Because again, I basically only store beef any longer than, I would say, three, four weeks at the most. Everything else in this freezer gets rotated, except the bacon, and I do right on the package of the bacon. I do write on that label the date that I bought it. So I try to always use the oldest stuff first. Now here I've got three pounds of this of this salmon and 
Holy cow, look at this piece of fish. I got three pounds of this. I think, again, I'll cut the tail off of this one. Cut this in half. Each one of those is more than likely enough for a meal. We'll take and just bag them up like they are. I usually buy these narrow bags in these big rolls, but I just used up the last of that. I was saying that I'm going to investigate one of these chamber style vacuum sealers that they use commercially. They cost four or five hundred bucks. And it depends how long you expect to be a carnivore. That may be a worthwhile investment anyway. I'm going to take a look into some of those and see if that might not actually be a good investment. Considering the fact that vacuum sealing food like this in the long run is going to save you just a lot of money. This is my third vacuum sealer I've gone through. This one I've had for A little over a year now, but I don't use it. I'm going to start, I'm going to be using it a lot more in the future because I, I fully intend to keep uh, doing this with these ex fairly expensive foods like, like wild caught salmon and cod and the ribs are cheap, but if this can keep the spoilage down, then I think it uh, might be a worthwhile investment. Okay, that's about it for all you people who find yourself solo carnivores. I think this is the best strategy we can use to not waste food. Expedite both our shopping and our cooking and simplify this even further. So think about that. Take the rest of the day off and eat meat.